next we talk about GIT. What effects does the long term uh, a spinal cord injured patient can have on the GIT system? So you can have problems like colonic poor colonic motility. So the stasis occurs in the fecal stasis occurs, which leads to chronic constipation, and ultimately leads to abdominal distension. Prolonged bowel transit time occurs because of poor motility and fecal incontinence can be another, another issue. He can have you know uh, leakage of the fe fecal matter spontaneously or the fecal legs can form, which can again remember in terms that we, it can lead to AD if the T6 level or above is uh, affected. So what are the solutions for the, this uh, these issues? You have to provide the proper nutrition and fluid intake. So that is why we need to do an LFT and see the serum albumin levels. How much albumin is there? If it is within the normal limits or not? Then dietary supplements and oral medications as and when needed to clear out. Suppose everything is fine, even then he is having these issues. Then we need dietary supplements and oral medications like oral laxatives, you know, or Senna, Isabgol, or else you you have to go for the uh, the Omnipack or the bowel enemas. Okay. Ideally, two bowel enema should be given so that one, the, fecal, the fecal load is entirely gone and then you can plan again for proper nutritional and fluid intake. The appropriate methods to assist defecations, like the patient is asked to, uh, you know, you should note down when the patient used to defecate before the injury. If he suppose used to defecate after getting up at around 8 o'clock, then, the uh, then ask the attendants or the caregiver or the rehabilitation nurses to make the patient sit on the commode, assisted, obviously, so that the patient is having that sense or might develop the sense of defecation at that time, particular time. Or what you can do is you can, uh, also you can aid it by giving a, a, you know, hot water or hot milk so that the gastric motility is promoted, right? After that, again, the patient has to uh, made to sit on the commode or a chair with a, you know, uh, the defecating stool bit, uh, below it. Then uh, lastly, if everything fails, then the ultimate st uh, step is to forming a stoma. But we do, you should try to avoid it as much as possible because the patient will have an out pouching from his stomach, which already he is having in a lot of distress and this will be again foul smelling and uh, it will be, you know, a uh, nuisance for everyone, even the caregivers. So again, this is uh, bowel management for patients with spinal cord injury. You maintain a regular stool chart. Avoid any constipating medicines like uh, morphine or you know uh, any sort of uh, uh, opioids because they are they themselves cause you know constipation or anticholinergics as far as possible. Continue patient his own bowel movement routine unless problematic. As we said, he used to get up and defecate suppose at eight or ten. So fix that time and uh, give a uh, booster in, uh, in the form of, you know, uh, hot tea to improve the colonic motility. Interventions recognized as beneficial include the dietary management, like balanced diet, role of fluid, fibers and all, regular routine, physical activities, like abdominal massage, you know, then gastrocolic reflex, as we discussed with now, physical activities, if the patient is, you know, paraplegic and all, he can do the upper body activities and bed, you know, uh, bed mobility exercises, all these things that can also promote it. Positionings like sitting on toilet or commode if possible. Okay, then pharmacological like stool softeners, stimulants, osmotic laxatives. Local triggers for defecations are suppositories, digital simulation and manual evacuation. So if any change is required or planned, then assess the patient's perception of bowel care problems, onset of problems and relevant factors, past history and medication, do a clinical examination, including PR, fluid and dietary intake, including the dietary fiber intake, minimal of 10 gram is required for a normal patient and avoid any frequent change of regimen. Give each intervention some time to work before you know frequently changing it. If the stools are too soft, soft, what do you need to do? The fiber is note that the fiber is high or medium, so reduce it. If the, there's no benefit, reduce the soluble fibers. And if the fibers are minimal, gradually increase the insoluble fibers, like is a goal, right? Or wheat, maize, these are basically the same thing. If the stools are too hard, then ensure that the water intake is more, more than two liters per day. And uh, 
If the fibers are less, increase it. If the fibers are high, try reducing it. So if no bowel actions are occurring despite above regimen, then optimize the fluid and diet chart again and uh, go for suppositories or manual evacuation. Now again, suppositories or man manual evacuation, there are a uh, lot many things to be discussed actually. We have the neurogenic bladder types. There is one is one is LMN type, lower motor neuron injury type, and one is the UMN type, upper motor neuron type. So uh, I, I don't think we have so much time to discuss each and everything. But lastly, if something fails, just remember that you go for a PR. Okay, the uh, picolith is not coming out, out, it is too hard. Then exclude obstruction by check the checking the rectum for fecal loading. Uh, plain abdominal X-ray or ultrasound if necessary for uh, excluding the bowel obstruction and proximal fecal loading. And uh, if the obstruction is excluded, then uh, go for you know uh, the again manual evacuation or enemas. Right. Then uh, again proximal fecal loading is there. Then it requires a different approach altogether.